Hello, I'm Justin Perkins. This is Talk Junkie, and I'm going to do another episode, uh, a one-time in. I do these from different places I've been and stuff like that because I really like them. I like the travel stuff. I've got a bunch of these lined up that I need to do. It's kind of slow getting to them. Today's going to be one time in West Virginia. I've spent a lot of time in West Virginia. Um, there's a lot of places in West Virginia I really like. Um, I like working down around Logan and stuff. I've worked in that area a lot. There's a lot of places I don't like, like actually in Charleston itself. I've never had a real good experience there. Uh, it's always been kind of bad. That's where I had to chase down the guy, the young kid that walked up and punched the guy for no reason. Uh, I'm old and I'm fat, but I would have caught you if I'd known what was going on just a second earlier. Because I almost got you by the time you got to that door. No, you're probably not listening. That's okay. Knockout game's real fun until you try to knock out the wrong person. And one of these days, that will happen to you. Um, but today, we're going to talk about uh, Bluefield and Princeton. Uh, two little cities right back-to-back in um, West Virginia. I was up there not too long back uh, doing a little bit of work. Uh, I only got to stay for about, I think it was four days. Uh, My wife and I are going to go back and take a trip and go back and stay for a weekend and just get out and look around because obviously when I'm working, I don't get a whole lot of time to look around. Plus, this was kind of right towards the beginning of the whole corona thing. It didn't affect my time up there and there wasn't anybody really talking about it up there. They still had no cases at that time. I don't know if they have cases at this time, but they definitely had no cases at that time. Uh, this was, I'm going to take a wild guess say right around the 1st of March. I don't know. I'm horrible with dates. I'm not sure what today is. I believe it's the 21st, but it could be later than that. Who knows? Um, but I had a really good time uh, looking around at that. I really, I like going to new places. I like small towns uh, and stuff like that. But from where I'm from, it takes a lot to be a small town. Uh, Princeton and Bluefield, Princeton in particular to me, is not a small town. Uh, it, it's a small town in regards to what I guess most people consider small town USA, but to me, it's uh, it's much larger than where I come from and has a lot more things than where I come from. But I like neat, little unique places, and I like natural places, and I like historical places. This place has all three of those. Now, again, I'm talking about Bluefield and Princeton collectively. Uh, most of the places I'm talking about are in Princeton or closer to Princeton. Um, and the main place I'm going to talk about first is actually outside of Bluefield. It's just in that area. I'm not super familiar with the area and what everything's called, so we're going to go by those two generic places, Princeton and Bluefield. Everything's right in that area, so it, uh, it, it'll be easy to look up if you want to look any of these things up. Now, upon arriving in Bluefield and taking some of the back roads to try to get back to the job I was going to, I passed something called Pinnacle Rock State Park. It's caught my eye right off. It's directly off this little road, um, Coal Heritage Highway maybe, what it's called. I'm not 100% sure, but I mean it's literally right there off the road. You put this in your GPS, uh, Pinnacle Rock State Park. It's super easy to find. Uh, it's off the beaten path if you're out on the main you know, uh, interstate or whatever. It, it is, but I was working off the beaten path. But it's really worth the drive. It's a super neat place. It's not a huge park by any stretch of the imagination. Actually, it's super small. You pull in. It's got a small parking lot. Um, and it's got a really neat stone um, picnic area that's uh, an actual stone. It's a shed. Uh, it's got a, a back porch type area. It's got um, your, your tables and things of that nature, restroom. Just a neat little area. It's got, uh, that I got to see three different trails, none of them super long. Um, one of them may not even really be considered a trail, it's just kind of the path up to Pinnacle Rock overlooking back down. But you've got this really neat stone um, shelter built there. And then off to the left of that, you've got this neat little playground type area of, of which part of that uh, is two climbing rock structures for younger kids that are really neat in their design. I really like that. I mean, it's a super cool place. If you've got me on Instagram, I, I, I've said it on other episodes. I don't have my paper with me. It's sad. I don't know what my Instagram is, but my name's Justin Perkins. It's probably author J Perkins or J Perkins or Justin Perkins or something of that nature. Or listen to one of the other episodes where I mention it. But if you got on Instagram, I posted, I believe, on there a bunch of the pictures from there. Um, 
it's it's a really really neat place. I'm going to post uh, probably one of the pictures from there. If you if you watch these on YouTube, it'll kind of be the thumbnail picture on YouTube. Or if you look at these on the Spreaker app, um, you know it'll it'll be that on there. But um, besides this little playground, you've got a picnic area. If you're looking up towards from the road towards the stone uh, building to the left of this, you've got the little playground area. You've got some picnic tables. You also have some fire pit like areas. Um, almost kind of like outdoor fireplace areas with some seating around it. Super neat. And from that back side, you have this beautiful view of, um, of Pinnacle Rock area. Uh, this is to the left side again in, in the main structure of the Pinnacle Rock. Um, it's really, really neat. And, and there's a, a, a short little um, trail that goes under it. I'm assuming it's short. I got to do most of it, not all of it. I didn't get to come all the way out, but it looked to me like it just went on up come back up near the road because there's a parking area out on that end. Um, I think it's called Fallen Rock Trail, something of that nature. But uh, it, it goes right under the Pinnacle Rock overlook, and it's super, super cool to look at. I, I really liked it. Now, if you're back in the parking lot and you're looking up at the, the stone um, shelter structure they have there, off to the right there's uh, another trail, I believe maybe a loop. I walked it all the way one way and then came back. Instead of it turn, and turning left and going down around it, um, I, I went right, and there's some outcroppings of rocks and some neat little areas to, to get on top of and stuff right there to the right. Uh, really neat, great for photos and stuff like that. Cool to look at. Uh, now, down on the, the bottom side of that trail, there were, you know, some sitting areas. I believe maybe some picnic tables out there. There were also some horseshoe stakes. It's just a nice place uh, in general, that whole lower area. Now, when you first pull in, there's a path that goes to the left that actually takes you up to the top of this, what they consider Pinnacle Rock. Um, you can go up there and there's like a little deck, uh, a neat deck. Uh, you sit on it and, and look at it. It's got an amazing view, a wonderful view. Now, I never seen a sign that said you couldn't go out off of the deck. Um, I know you're not supposed to climb on the rocks, you know, and get out obviously towards the edge. I don't know if it's not allowed. If it's not allowed, it's not posted very well because I didn't see it. But I did go out. There's a little bit of a cave you can go through just for a second. Like you can see right through it, maybe eight feet long. And you pop out, and it has a wonderful overlook. Now, there is an edge I would not recommend having kids out there. I would probably stay on that decking if I went up there with, you know, anyone under 16. And anyone from 16 to 18 that's not really smart and still in that phase of, hey, watch this. Well, actually, for boys, that's probably 16 to 26, 36, somewhere there. I probably wouldn't take them out there. But if you are responsible and capable of acting with some common sense, you could go out and go through this little cave and overlook. But, man, it, it's an amazing overlook. It's beautiful. The, the, the park's weird in the fact that it's right next to the road. There's a lot of road noise. I mean, literally, it's you're, you're looking down the road. But it does have a great overlook, and, and it's worth it for the overlook. And they've made it. They've created a neat little park. Um, the... There is a, it is, it looks like an amazing place for rock climbing. Uh, it's, it has a sign that says no rock climbing without permit, so I'm assuming you can get a permit to climb it. Um, that was probably, that, that ties as my favorite spot, uh, that I went to up there. <laughs> Outdoor wise, that's my favorite spot. Um, there's another outdoor spot I wanted to go to, didn't get to go to. It's going to be later on in in the list here we're looking at. My next favorite spot um, is right outside of, of there. It, it's back towards Bluefield. It may actually be, be considered being in Bluefield. I'm not sure. Um, it's a store called Spookables. Um, this place is awesome. Uh, it, it's, you know... You don't expect to see it. it. It looks like a store that would only sell horror thing, themed things, and it looks like what you'd find maybe in a um, like a I don't know a, a, a bad flea market somewhere, uh, which is kind of what I look for. It looks like that. It looks kind of it looks unique from the outside, which is a good thing. I'm not a horror person, so. I didn't, you know, my expectations were, oh, this will be cool. Uh, I've got two friends that I do another podcast with, occasionally, or at least used to. They're, they're thinking, I don't know if it's on hiatus, don't know what deals there, but 
um, I thought, well, you know, Brad and, and Brandon would, would really like some things in here. If nothing else, I'll get some cool pictures to send back to them. I ended up taking no pictures what time I was in there. Of course, they're, they're big horror fans. I'm not. But it's because I was kind of enamored with what was in there. The pl- It's toys, you know, vintage 80s toys and, and back, uh, records, cassettes, VHS, which I love. It's just everything. It's a super neat place. Super nice owner. Really interesting. Really fun to talk to. Um, we, we talked about a lot of things about, you know, stuff I collected, stuff I liked. Uh, the place I was from, he'd actually worked close to where I'm from, you know, Pikeville at one point in time and had been down this way some. And just a super nice guy. Really fun. Really interesting store. Um, he said he kind of... It was a mix between, uh, you know, all these places he would go pick on the weekends for his personal collection and how, you know, just stuff piled everywhere. That kind of mixed with, with Ray's store uh, in Ghostbusters, his, uh, you know, uh, bookstore that he had. Just a, a mix of that kind of messy, eclectic, you know, weird look. And, and it, it, it really is fun. Like, you know, you feel overwhelmed when you first go in. You're like, man, there's stuff everywhere. How am I ever going to go through all this stuff? And then you get in there and you start looking and like it's fun because you don't know what's going to be under the next thing you find. And and I really, really liked that that aspect of it. That store and Pinnacle Rock alone um, are worth the trip. When you throw, now we're going to shift out towards the, the Princeton area. The first place I kind of rode up on and discovered out towards the Princeton area was a place called Cheap Thrills, uh, and it was a music store. And it, again, has some cool DVDs, some really cool records. Like, it has some really cool things out that way that when I when I got out there, I was like, oh, man, like, I love this place. And um, I, it, it's, it's definitely the third right on that list. It's close with Spookables, but Spookables is so unique and so cool, and they have VHS, and I'm kind of partial to that. But Cheap Thrills is really, really cool. I mean, it's it's a place that just, um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a music buff as well as a movie buff, and I really liked really liked it. it they had good stuff. Um, and, and like I said, it's a lot easier to get to. It's right off uh, kind of the main road there, and, and it's up towards this Princeton area. And the Princeton area, you know, they have a mall, um, you know, like many places do, except from where I'm from. Um, you know, they've got an FYE and things of that nature. But it was a really, really cool music store. Um, I checked out their Salvation Army. Anywhere there's a Salvation Army, you know, like a restore, Salvation Army store, Habitat for Humanity restore, uh, Goodwill, I checked those out. Uh, I don't think I got to go to Goodwill. I don't think they had a Goodwill, but they had the Salvation Army, uh, and, and it was it was cool, and I enjoyed checking it out. Now, on this street that I found the Salvation Army on, I found some other stores I didn't get to go into, but they're part of the reason I want to go back. One, uh, I, my trip to New York, I've always loved old buildings and, and old um, architecture, older, especially dilapidated buildings, and there's some of that there. Uh, but my trip to New York kind of made me realize, man, I really like ornate and unique buildings, and, and I really kind of like chance to get out and look at these buildings there's a lot of those there especially church wise in that little area right there and there's some neat buildings and and structures there Uh, so those caught my attention now on top of that um, as I'm on this street where uh, Salvation Army is you got to remember it's it's late and um, you know I'm just getting off work when I'm getting to go down and check these places out and in doing that I'm um, I mean, thereafter, a lot of places are closed, okay? So I didn't get to go in these places, but I'd like to go back and check them out. They seemed interesting. Uh, one of those places is a place called 80s Toy Store. It's got the G.I. Joe logo. And it's 80s. Um, I didn't get to go in and check it out, but it's a super cool-looking store, and that's not an everyday run-of-the-mill store that you would find in a place like that. There's also a consignment shop called New Kids on the Block Consignment. So some people have got together and put together, at least uh, conscious, consciously put together some some similar things here, you know. They've got a, a motif going on, if you will, and it's, it, it's, it's really cool. Um, 
I seen a place called the Sophisticated Hound Brewery. Brewery. Wow, spit that out. I don't drink, but it was a, a cool looking place. I seen another place there. I believe uh, it was at least next to this place called Totally Glazed, which was a, a donut shop. I'm not sure what it was. Uh, but it looked kind of like a coffee shop. There's a, a coffee shop type place there that had like a, it looked like an outdoor seating, a really neat looking place. I didn't get the name of it, and I wish I would have. Um, there's a place called Riff Raff uh, Art Boutique. Um, it, it seemed cool. There there was, it seemed like a lot of little art things going on right here in this area. There was a place called Mad Hatters. I'm not sure what it was. I believe it was a barber shop because... Um, I, I seen I've seen some stuff online, kind of trying to find these places. I can't remember what I was, but this one stretch had all these unique type uh, businesses and local businesses there that really interested me. So it's it's a place I'd really like to go back and check out just for all those. And like I said, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, it's until I'm what's there because I didn't really get to to look around much. And this was one street. Uh, and, and this is a really neat looking area, a really neat looking area. Um, let's see, there was some other stuff there. There was a place called Game Central I didn't get to find, but showed online, they showed it online. I want to say maybe that's the place the guy from Spookables told me about, said it was a real cool store. I think I was right there when I was at Cheap Thrills. I think it may have just been on the other side, but um, I didn't I didn't get to find it and check it out, but... Um, it, it came highly recommended, and I found some stuff online. Uh, there's two music stores, and I love music stores, and I didn't get to make it to either one of them. But there's one called Lollipop Music. Um, or it might have been a lollipop. It was a weird spelling, but I think it was Lollipop. Uh, and then there was one called Concert Music World. Both of those two, um, you know, what I've got to see online, I kind of just I seen the sign from one. Somebody told me about the other one. I didn't get to make it to them. Uh, because of how late it was. But again, uh, two more reasons why I would like to go back and kind of check that out. Um, there's some historical nature, th- you know, kind of related stuff I didn't get to check out that I would like to. I've seen a lot of um, stuff that would say historical downtown and this and that. And these. I really want to check out those places when I go back. I, that's something that I kind of look for in cities. But I was kind of stressed for time. I didn't have a, a day to do things. I was having to do things in the evening. There's a thing called uh, East River, um, oh, what was it? I'm sorry. I have a list of some stuff and some stuff I'm having to remember and I don't have the best memory. Uh, East River Mountain Overlook is what it was called. Um, it was a cool little overlook by what I've seen online. I've seen the turnoff for it. I've seen some information about it, but I didn't really get to go look at it. Um, Lolito City Park. I didn't get to check out. Thanks how they pronounce that. I'm not sure. Uh, Gary Boland's House of Art. Something else I didn't get to check out. It's something I've seen a lot of signs for, but I've really not got to find out any information on yet. Is uh, Pocahontas Exhibition Coal Mine. Kind of, kind of still curious to what that is. Um, something I've seen, and, and these are things that are a little harder to get to, but I've seen some, some um, kind of. Uh, older, dilapidated farm buildings and things of that nature, barns and stuff on my way up. That's things I like to get off and get pictures of, and that was kind of on my way up to there, uh, coming from St. Paul, going that way. Um, if, if it's on private property, I'm not going to go on private property, but if it's somewhere where I can get off the side of the road and get some pictures, I enjoy doing that. I got a really cool picture from the side of the road going back, and, and this is outside of there. This is... Um, I don't know how far outside of there, but it was on my way back, going back towards St. Paul and Colburn, back that way. Uh, it was bef- well before St. Paul. But um, I got a picture of these people. They had a, uh, a farm, you know, and they had cattle running around, and they had a, a cave in their front yard. Well, at least in their, their you know, where they kept their cattle. Uh, and I thought that was so awesome. I, I'm big in a cave, so I'm assuming there's some, some cave areas in there. Um I haven't looked map-wise. I don't think I was real, real far from Damascus, but I'm going to do one of these on Damascus, but I'm going to wait until I go back to Damascus this summer and do a couple more of the things I wanted to do while I was there. But I'm going to do one of these one-time win in, uh, uh, based around Damascus at some point. But again, it was four or five days. It, it is a smaller area, but um, 
I like smaller. I like going to these places. I've not been to these unique places. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really nice place. There's, there's plenty of lodging. There's plenty of food, things of that nature. Like there's shopping, commercial shopping things. But there's these unique stores, and I don't know what all there is because I didn't get to really put the time into looking and trying to find everything because of work, obviously. Um, but I am going to go back, my wife and I, for a weekend and take my son at least. I don't know if my daughter, you know, I don't know if there are things up there that would interest her. But with the toy stores and stuff like that, my son would be in heaven. So uh, I am going to go back and check it out. And if I do, maybe I'll do an update on this and do a second time um, from Bluefield. <laughs> Is that? Um, it's hard to find a quote related with to West Virginia that wasn't like, you know, which it would be with probably any state because i just done a general search criteria of West Virginia quotes because in my book of quotes, I don't really have any quotes about West Virginia. Uh, it's not, you know, I don't know why I would have. Um, I want to say that I've worked in West Virginia a lot uh, over the years and West Virginia is a really beautiful state. Uh, they have some really beautiful areas and some really unique areas. I like different terrains. Uh, and I like going into different places. I like hiking and I like being in a lot of places. Um, a lot of the stuff I find in West Virginia is rocky. Uh, in a different way than than this was out towards Bluefield and stuff. The kind of the stuff out towards Bluefield is more that uh, Virginia type terrain. If you've ever been, you know, you'll you know the difference in these when you see them, you know. Uh, but I really like West Virginia, and, and it's a really neat place, and and it is wild and wonderful, and and I. I think it's a beautiful place. I really do. And I, I know they, they take a lot of crap, just like Eastern Kentucky takes a lot of crap. And, and people want them to be something that they're not. But, you know, when when you live in the mountains, especially, in you know, a long time ago, when, when these families first settled in these mountains and first started in these mountains, you're, you're isolated. And I really believe that to some degree... We were extremely isolated up until the Internet age and, and kind of the World Wide Web really connected people for the first time. And, and i seen a change in how quickly trends and, and ideas made it into our society down here uh, post-Internet as compared to pre-Internet. You know, a lot of older ideals may have lasted, some good, some bad, um, but... We had a different identity before the internet, and, and people kind of still view us for that identity. And some people still look down on it, and I don't really care. I'm, I'm proud of that identity and, and who we were. Probably more so proud of that identity than the identity we, we kind of share with them now because there was a uniqueness to it. And I feel like West Virginia, especially those parts of West Virginia that I go to a lot, uh, shared a lot of that uh, that identity and, and that, that upbringing and that isolation that, that we had here in the mountains. And, and I really do like West Virginia. Uh, Jerry West said, I'm still a West Virginia boy. I haven't forgotten my roots because that's really who I am. Um, those of you who don't know Jerry West, he's, he's the logo. <laughs> he literally is the logo until they possibly change it to Kobe Bryant. Um, but Jerry West has been the logo for the NBA for a long time. Uh, but that's what happened that one time when I went to Bluefield and Princeton. I went to those places. I know some of these are entertaining and have fun stories, and some of them are just meant to inform, and some of them are just a discussion. But I really liked it. And if you're ever that way, at least swing in. And if nothing out, nothing else, check out Spookables and Cheap Thrills uh, and Pinnacle Rock. Pinnacle Rock would be my first. Uh, but then after that, check out uh, Spookables and Cheap Thrills. Uh, two cool, very cool places. And like I said, there's a lot of other cool places there that I didn't get to look at that I wish I could. Uh, and the East River Mountain Overlook, I hope that that's right. I believe it. I really believe it is. The East River Mountain Overlook is right off the main road. I don't believe it's very far off the main road. So uh, it's kind of cool that that's right there and easy to get to. That's going to be the first thing I check out if I ever get sent back up there again for work. But um, have a great day. Oh, let's do this because I haven't done this in a while. Um, Red Spotted Newt, R-E-A-D, Red Spotted Newt Bookstore in Hazard, Kentucky. Uh, somewhere on Main Street, I believe it's 41701. I can remember an address from a place I used to work 20 years ago, but I can't remember something from five minutes ago. But um, uh, 
Red Spider Nook's the only place in Eastern Kentucky. It's the only local bookstore anywhere now at this point in time that you can get my books unless they bought them and resell them. Then I don't know about it. Uh, and you can order them, and I'm sure they would get them to you online. If she's got any left in stock, she can get them for you online. If she don't, she'll tell me, and I'll get her some more, and she can get them to you online. But order from them, if at all possible. If you have any interest in Cold Kingdom, my poetry book, uh, everyone's different, just like me, a book I, I've done with my son, um, and The Boy with Super Hearing, another children's book we've done. If you have any interest in those books, um, check them out. I'm going to recommend one if you've got kids. Everyone's different, just like me. It was fun because I got to do it with my son, and I enjoyed it. And it's it's a decent little book. It's for younger readers. Um, you know, Cold Kingdom, I've done podcasts about writing books here and there. I don't know if I've ever went in depth on it. Uh, I don't have a memory. I went in depth on it on videos on my YouTube page if you want to go back. There's readings from the book on my YouTube page if you'll go back and look at the videos. And maybe give you an idea of what it is and what it's about. And if you would want it and be interested in it. If you are and you, you know, try to order from them. They're on Facebook, Red Spotted Newt. Uh, if it's just not plausible for you to order from them for whatever reason you live really far away or whatever be the case, you don't have a payment method, but then it works. If you want to order it from Amazon, it is available from Amazon. Um, but I would prefer you got it from Red Spotted Newt and support local businesses. It's local for me, you know, and makes a difference. Makes it easier for me to write books because People like that support me. You know, uh, Hot Rods Pizza in Hyman, Kentucky. Always supported me. Always was there. Let me do events with my books and stuff. Let me do this podcast when I first started doing this podcast. Um, let me podcast from there. It's super nice and, and easy to deal with and always been really good to me. Um, so, you know, it, it's hard to not support those local businesses. And, you know, right now, kind of the situation the world's in, you need to support those local You always need to support local businesses, but... Um, you know, support artists and, and local businesses. Um, check out, um, uh, go on Facebook even if you're around here or not, and check out Roundabout Music in Whitesburg, Kentucky. Uh, they sell records, they sell cassettes, uh, they sell stereo equipment. Uh, I've seen some music equipment in there from time to time. They sell art as well as um, the Red Spotted Nook sells local art. They sell local art at Roundabout Music. Uh, one of the owners is a local artist named Lacey Hale, a phenomenal local artist um you know check them out times like this really hard on places like red spotted Newt and roundabout music because you know everything's shut down it's they're not going to get clientele uh another group of people that are dear to my heart that um are really going to be affected by this are, are tattoo artists uh, and a lot of those tattoo artists not all but a lot of them sell uh artwork and do things outside of um, just tattoos. I know John Haywood um, from the parlor room in Whitesburg, Kentucky. He does things outside of just tattooing. He does art and stuff. And he's selling his art online right now. And his art is next level. Like, I mean, he's a tattoo artist and he's an artist. He's a musician. This guy's talented on so many different levels. It's ridiculous. I don't know this guy. It's not like we're best friends. This guy's done some tattoos on me. I'm not doing this because this guy pays me. I'm just telling you because it's legit amazing to me what this guy's able to do. And, and I really want to see people support local people like that. And it's not just him. Uh, you know, there's a lot of tattoo shops out there and a lot of tattoos, tattoo artists out there. And, and I really respect their ability. And I really see what they do as an art. I've got some work done uh, from a gentleman named Mel Cottle. And he's got a shop in London, Kentucky. And I would highly recommend him. He's a great guy and he does great work. And I'd like to see you interact with, his, with him online. See if there's something he's doing right now to make money kind of in the meantime, you know, maybe he's putting some stuff out. I don't know. I, you know, I've, I've kind of lost contact since he moved. Uh, again, just somebody that's done work for me that I appreciate. I'm, I don't know these people. They're not paying for me. I mean, I know who they are, but we're not like hanging out on the weekends, things of that nature. Um, young Russell, uh, I think it's Russell Griswold. I always thought that was neat because that's, uh, I don't know that that's actually his last name, but that's the name he goes by online, and it's the same name as the dude from uh, National Lampoons, from us from National Lampoons, but he is at the parlor room in Whitesburg, Kentucky. There's a lot of great artists there. It's just two guys I know, and, and he's done work on me, and I really, really like that. Lost Gypsy Tattoo and Hazard, uh, Draven, and I know there's a uh, baker guy that works there. I believe they do some art stuff outside of... of um, a lot of those guys there do some artwork outside of tattooing, so 
get on Lost Gypsy. If, if, you've, if they've ever done a tattoo for you and you, and you have the means, because not everybody has the means right now. Money's tight for everybody. Money's tight for me. People don't know when they're going to work. But if, if you are going to purchase something, at least try to purchase it from people like that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, don't die. Don't suck. Don't be mean to people. Um, don't watch the news. Read more. Um, that's about all the advice I got. Um, <laughs> and most of it is probably bad. I don't know. But uh, you guys have a great day. Remember to like, subscribe, share, do all those wonderful things. It's on iTunes. It's If you're listening to it on iTunes, it's also available on YouTube. And there's a lot of other videos. If you go further back, back before this started, that were just video videos. If you only listen to it on YouTube, it's available on iTunes, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, whatever they do. It's basically available everywhere. If you are a member of Spreaker and you have the Spreaker app, it's very much available on Spreaker. Um, I'm on... Yeah, I'm on some social media, but I'm no longer on Facebook for this show. This show doesn't have a place on Facebook right now, but we may work on that down the road. I don't know. Um, I think I told you it don't suck. 